Hi, and welcome to this live reading from City Without a Sun, Vampire State Book 2 by Alexander Chair Lambides, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. It's raining again. Black droplets run down the window like spilled ink. We are high above the street here, so it doesn't have time to stain the fancy screen window that takes up the entire wall of the apartment. Could be worse, though. At least I'm starting to get used to it here. It's not so sterile anymore. I got rid of one or two paintings and some marble busts of sneering pails. I even bought some imported plants. Plants that don't need any sunlight, of course. It's slowing down already, thinning out to a drizzle. Enough for me to see the city. Sanguinea. It rains black here. Sometimes, when I get up during the night and stumble over to the refrigerator, the black rain on the window surprises me again. It has something to do with the colossal statues they use as furnaces. People get together and throw in special herbs to make huge squat columns of black smoke, like thunderheads that dominate the skyline. Clouders. I think Vincenzo mentioned it was a social event once. Still never been. And I feel stupid at the moment, sitting around on the cold, creaking leather couch, glass of milk in one hand, phone in the other hand. There are things I should do. I won't have all this free time forever. Still, I can't help but glance out over the city again, my eyes running over the jagged silhouettes of cathedrals, knife-edged skyscrapers, and the blunt vertebrae bulges of the sun shields over the highways. We're in a nice area here. Maybe it was naive to expect the view to be any different, hope that somehow everything I could see from my window wouldn't be black. When I have the apartment to myself like this, I set up my tablet over the fireplace. It plays some simple jungle white noise. Matches the plants. I've been waiting too long. Anxiety's one thing, but now I'm getting impatient. My thumb hovers over the button, and the screen starts to pulse. He might not even pick up. Dad? The word's out of my mouth, the phone up to my ear the second the screen changes. Oh, Rowena? His voice is low, and there's noise around him, wind, perhaps a crowd of voices. It's always impossible to tell over the phone. Something wrong? N no. I shake my head, even though he can't hear me. I promised I'd check in now and then, remember? Oh, is this that? He laughs, just not in the way I remember. Nice to know I'm not pers persona non grata with my own daughter. I want to say, of course you're not. But if I'm going to say it, I want it to be true. So, what are you up to? Did we ever have much in common? Ever since he became a pale, we've had even less time to spend together. But I don't think that's the problem. I mean, he chose someone else over me and, my, me and mom. No, I shouldn't think of that when I'm talking to him. It's it's not fair. Ah, you're asking how the lifestyle of the legatus major domo is treating your old man, eh? He laughs again, and the sound around him dies away as though he's taken his phone outside. Lots of parties, good food, drink. Raising money, giving speeches, exciting stuff, Rowena. I can hear him smiling down the line. Your boyfriend really set the cat amongst the pigeons, making it so the hum that humans can't become cit can become citizens. Lots of people unhappy, lots of energy. He laughs again. Sorry, I, I know that's probably hitting a nerve. How's things going at your end? I'm settling in. My eyes scan the apartment, the little corner of plants in the white, sterile white. Still getting used to it. Missing mom. Same, same. Dad lowers his voice. You don't have her number, do you? I still think we left things wrong. She made it very clear she didn't want this for any of us. He makes it sound like there was some sort of misunderstanding. Maybe he thinks there was. No. It's true, I don't. I might be able to find out, but it doesn't feel like it matters anymore. There's no going back. Well, all right, Dad sighs. So, what's Vincenzo doing these days? Still paying off softy politicians to trample all over the letter of the law? Now he's picking a fight. Not in a bad way. I think he just likes to argue. That's the idea, I tell him. 
wreck the country, put humans in charge of everything, free the slaves, crash the economy. Business as usual, really. I know you're joking, he replies, but that could actually happen, you know. There's a legal way to become a citizen. You, if you just start to hand it out willy-nilly to everyone, it doesn't mean so much. People stop respecting the state. That's when you get problems. So we don't have any now, I ask. I'm just killing time till, until Vincenzo comes home, really. Who knows? This could be a good practice. I know you're just trying to get a rise out of your old man, he says, but look, I have to go. The Legatus wants me to give another speech. Very prestigious. You stay safe, okay? Just think twice before you go getting political. I... He hangs up before I reply. That might be a first. The phone drops out of my hand. The screen glows up at me. Five minutes. It's still on silent. I must have missed the message while I was talking to Dad. He's settling in, at least, and he's probably making a nice living as the Legatus, Legatus's hand puppet. At least he's not all over the news. Seeing him on television constantly, claiming to win debates against people by cutting off their audio, wouldn't be good for my blood pressure. Something creaks outside. Not that weird. This place is high-end. But it's still an apartment complex. It took me a few weeks to stop being nervous when I'm here on my own, but the sound is so close it could only be Vincenzo. The door clicks and swings open. Oh, his yellow eyes glint as he folds his coat under one arm. You're still awake. Sorry for creeping up on you. It's okay. His feet are a few inches off the ground. That's one way to stay quiet, I guess. I can't help but roll my eyes, but he's used to it by now. It forces his gray-pointed features into a grin. Bored out of your mind again, he asks. I'm sure we could get... It's fine. I look out over the city again, wondering how many of the dots I see against the smothered moonlight are pales like him, with strong enough blood to fly. No, really. I turn back to him. I know it doesn't sound like it, but I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're glad. He hangs up his coat and starts to undo his tie. Anything exciting happened while I was gone? Called my dad, I tell him. Sounds like he's getting into politics, too. Yes, I heard something to that effect. His voice echoes in from the kitchen. One come from behind political upset, and suddenly everyone assumes they can do it. He emerges with two slices of toast in his hand. Best I can do. Appreciate it. It's times like this I should try to be positive. At least the butter's not black. I take a bite. So, having talked about politics all night, I can't say I really fancy anymore. He settles onto the couch beside me, head resting on my shoulder, shirt buttons loose enough to expose a sliver of his pale gray skin just above the collarbone, still stinging slightly with a fine sheen of sweat. Agreed, I point up into the space, toast in my mouth. Put it up on the band board. Band! Vincenzo shouts. Anything you fancy? A movie? I could run out and get something to eat. I'm told the neighborhood has an excellent chunky Chunkies. I'm okay, I tell him as he gets up, swiping his hand across the black rectangle and it flickers to life. Just tired. Nervous, probably. And Chunkies gives me a gas. Agreed. His eyes are fixed on the screen. I mean, who wouldn't be hearing their dads are teaming up? He looks over at me. It's not funny, but it's the thought that counts, so I laugh. Do we have to watch the news? I'm not sure if I even recognize the channel. They've got so many here, but they're all the same. We don't have to, he shrugs, settling back down next to me. I just need to soak up some reactions, gauge how people are feeling. Not sure if you can get that from... My hand waves at the pundits on the screen as Vincenzo pumps up the volume. Whatever this is. True. True, he nods. I misspoke. I need to know what the establishment's thinking. The lines they're being fed, that kind of thing. I guess. A sigh escapes down Vincenzo's half-unbuttoned shirt. It's always the same. It is. He raises a gray slender hand, grasping the television remote. But the words they choose matter. The volume rises until there are sounds to tie to the flapping mouths. I don't really want to listen, but each time I glance up at Vincenzo's narrowed golden eyes, I can see him following along. He's warm. Weird thing to think, right? Of course he is. He should be. Not as much as a, a, 
person, maybe that's the wrong word, but it's not like sitting with a statue or an ice sculpture. That probably would have been a deal breaker. So, it's too early to go to sleep even if I'd like to. The gentle splattering of black rain, the sound of glowing traffic cruising by in the dark, and the slow rise and fall of Vizzezo's chest are all conspiring against me. I have to ask him something. Might even be worth knowing. Then Senzo grunts. Well, we've seen plenty of black backlash, he glances down at me. You know that already, he sighs, shifting where my head rests on his chest a little. But now it seems like the reactionaries are falling in line, he points up at the screen. Most of the funding and airtime's going to the ULA, the United Lawful, he trails off, something. Advent? It doesn't really matter, he sniffs out a two-tired chuckle. They're a throwback. That's the point, I suppose. A lot of appeals to outdated, oppressive moral values, that sort of thing. Two pails dressed in suits are talking back and forth. In the top right corner of the screen is a picture of a man I don't recognize. Who's that? I ask. That's the problem, he says, looking at the portrait of a stone-jawed, broad-nosed, hairless pail hanging over the two pundits like an owl high up in a tree. Flavius Fortis. Absurd name. Can't possibly be his real one. He's been doing the rounds for a while now. Professional agitator and merchandise salesman, banging on about the country, losing its way, getting too soft. I'm sure you can imagine. Not exactly taken seriously, even by the ivy drip and coffin crowd. But he formed a political party? The scene shifts, another pundit, an expansive graphic, a graph shifting up and down, all in black, red, white, and red. Well, it's complicated, Vincenzo says. How best to explain it? He points again. See their file photo? Uh-huh, I nod. Down where they cut it off, see his suit? He asks. We follow his finger and see the red shirt and red blazer where his neck fades into transparency. He's wearing a red suit? That sounds like a stupid question. I'm sure he'll be happy to explain what I'm not getting about all this. Exactly, Vincenzo snaps his fingers. Always has. Only now, the pictures shift to footage of a crowd on the steps of the senatorio. Ah, they beat me to it. It's easy to pick out Flavius Fortis in the center of the crowd, bobbing up and down over a sea of red suits. Now people are dressing the same? Right, replies Vincenzo. Backlash is one thing, but people like Fortis are getting licensed to run wild. The establishment, possibly even the emperor, they're scared, Rowena. They've never been challenged like this before. So they put their capital behind this guy? The television's not loud enough. I can't hear the slogans, but I can read their faces. Skin stretched. Fangs bared. He's never had much of a following. Vincenzo flips to another channel. Different suits, different graphics, but now that I know the face and the bright red suits, there's no escaping them. See? Every network, he's making headlines. The ULA growing by the hour. Great. It's a cop-out. I'm sure Vincenzo would love to talk policy or make a plan, but I just don't have the energy. So the country's throwing a tantrum because we managed to get humans something like a tenth of the rights pales already have? Sounds about right. He closes his eyes, resting his head on top of mine. They're frightened. That I understand. Still, I'm glad of your perspective. My eyes flicker across the graphics. Vote shares. Exit polls. Demographic charts. Are they talking about anything else? It has to keep me awake. Anything else, replies Vincenzo. You know how myopic the networks can be. Let's see. He starts channel surfing again, the gentle flick of his fingers sending the picture blinking in and out, a little window into hundreds of tiny worlds. Royal family intrigue? Too tabloid for you, I'm sure. Peace talks? Inflation? Huh? I'm getting too drowsy to pay much attention. The Emperor has a family? What? He looks down at me. Oh, oh no, not Emperor Dominius. The royal family of Comet. I've heard their prince is scheduled to visit soon, hammer out some sort of treaty. The papers are speculating on his relationship status. Should I admit I have no idea where Comet is? I think it's supposed to be hot, lots of sand. I guess that's harmless, I shrug a little. He must be really interesting. 
Well, that's the thing, Vincenzo says. See? He flicks channels again, settling on a headline about this treaty with Comet. No headshot. Comessians don't like having their picture taken, or so I've heard. Some sort of superstition. Not sure why. They have no excuse for being backwards. Their country's quite advanced, very rich, lots of oil, but they insist on clinging to their ancient religion. They are pharaohs supposed to have mystical powers. Really? My eyes flick up to the black opaque portrait, a question mark in the place of his highness's royal features. What sort? I don't know the details. Something to do with floods, storms, that sort of thing. Sounds mysterious. Is that why they're so fascinated? Most likely, but I doubt they'll get much or that these talks will amount to anything. Relations between Comet and Sanguinia have always been tense. He's probably right, not that I would know. People talk about politics and borders, but they never mention Estovia. That's where I'm from. It helps to remind myself now and then. Last time I saw it, the Sanguinian flag was flying over it. None of these new shows ever show what's happening there or feature anyone that looks like me. It feels like I don't exist at all. You don't look happy, he whispers in my ear, his lips gliding by just close enough to linger on my forehead. Nervous? Maybe, I grunt. Not about the job. Just life? He laughs. I can't say I blame you. People always fight progress. He runs his fingers through my hair, and despite the fatigue, it sends a wave of shivering heat through my scalp and down my back. But progress still wins. I really hope you're right. I glance over at the window. Instinct. I want to know the time, so I look out the window. Now I feel stupid. What's the time? I ask Vincenzo. Late, he says. Late enough, I'd say. You're getting an early start tomorrow, after all. That's the plan. I start to flex my arms and legs, and he lets me go. I rise into the cold air, wishing I was the sort of person who could forget the future, just settle back down and sleep with him on the couch. Is that your alarm? He asks. First thing I did, I grunt back. Besides, we're getting up at the same time. For once, he chuckles, rising after me, his hand on my back. My room's dark, away from the window. It helps with sleeping. It used to be a big closet or something. There's just a mattress shoved into a corner and a small cabinet with a glowing alarm clock to light it. We moved in here on pretty short notice after Vincenzo's parents cut him off from the family money. It helps to remember that every time he comes home very late or I get annoyed with him for always wanting to talk politics. He's good at it. Good night. I poke my head back out the doorway at him as he stalks down the hallway. Good night, Rowena. He smiles, his eyes glinting in the dark. You'll feel better as it gets closer. Yeah, hope so. I duck back in before I say something dumb. My computer's there, charging from the outlet near the end of the bed. Should have taken more time. Written some more notes. Part of me feels like I could get covered in makeup, go under some spotlights, and talk bullshit for hours, but there's another part of me that knows nothing's that simple. I look in my phone, double-check the alarm. Seven o'clock. New job.